Oh, I hate him. Sorry, I'm so mad right now. Oh, Lord, I'm glad I need to I my cross up. today. <laughs> Coming up on the Vanderpump Rules after show. I will call the cops. Okay. Girl, he was your friend in the house. All right, having a little birthday party ain't shit. When you did that with Kristen, you're not gonna talk about 10 years ago. And he wasn't even doing it because he was like in love with Kristen. Totally missed the part where he has nothing to stand on anymore. Ariana like hadn't paid any of the bills for like in eight months. I don't trust a word you say. So if you are gonna tell me that I owe you a certain amount of money, you better be able to show your work. Is it illegal to piss on someone's bush? James, no. You were a gremlin. You're a loser and you're a backstabber. Betrayal, ultimate. Did that answer your question? The Vanderpump Rules After Show starts right now. James, you decide to stop by Tom Sandoval's birthday party. I'm trying to figure out where Tom's been, like when did he like start like hating me and where did it all just go wrong? I feel like a big brother like to me has like kind of gotten lost. Cause I was kind of expecting a text, do you know what I mean? Which never came. I apologize for that, that I didn't, you know, reach out to you. Are you right sorry away. for like betraying me? Betraying you? Yeah, like the ultimate betrayal. You know, he chose Raquel over us, over our friendship, over everything that we've ever been through. To me, it sounded like he was the most betrayed person in the situation. And James does have a tendency to put like, if something happens to everyone, like he's the only victim or something. I had seen him two days before Scandal broke out. And like, I was like, classic James, you know, when are we hanging out, brother? Like, bro, like, where the fuck have you been? It's like, going back and just thinking about it, even like, it juices me up now. Like I've released that anger, but now talking about it, I'm fing angry at Sandoval again. And he knew what he was doing in the moment as well. Like, it's ultimate betrayal, honestly. When this went down, my world was falling apart. I'm getting phone call after phone call from my parents, Schwartz, everybody, like, and then I got James Kennedy calling me, screaming, leaving like insulting, crazy rant, te text messages, voicemails. And I was so overwhelmed. I don't have time to like deal with a rowdy, belligerent James Kennedy. And yeah, that's, I should have, I should have talked to him. I regret not doing that. It was me maybe hiding, being scared and running away instead of facing it. And I should have, I should have bucked up and done that. I knew that you were good friends with him and I knew that like you called him like big, big bro or whatever, but I didn't know that, that you looked up to him so much. Well, I mean, look, like I met Tom when I was 20 or like 19, right? And then like flash forward to now, it's like, no, I don't look up to him anymore. But there was a time when I did, you know? James and I are cool and I've definitely been there for him when nobody else has. Like, yeah, we are friends. Do we take multiple trips together? Do we hang out on the regular? No, we don't. Like, he's not like Tom Schwartz. He's not Kyle Chan. He's not Jason, you know? But we do hang out. Like, you know, we see, maybe see each other like what? Once a month maybe, or like, or so. Like Tom wants to say, oh, look, we were never that close and stuff like that. Huh? Bro. But that's just, oh. that, but that's just to How close do you want to be? How close do people have to be nowadays to be best friends? Like, I really don't get it. And it's different for girls. When you're a man, okay, by the time you're 30 years old, I don't need a best friend. I'm working. I'm busy. I've got a house now and I'm trying to keep my front porch clean. Like, I don't have time to be besties with someone. Right? But like, but like, I didn't need that, Tom. All I needed was you to just remain Tom forever and just remain that person you said you fucking were. But no, you were a gremlin. You're a loser and you're a fucking backstabber. Betrayal, ultimate. Did that answer your question? Tom came back from New Zealand and he wanted to have a party. You said no. <laughs> and you said, if people come over, I'll call the cops. <laughs> I love being hyperbolic. I will call the cops. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I'm not surprised. I mean, it was very hard for me to have people over to the house when we were together. There's no rule when you both own a home, obviously. Both owners can do whatever they want, right? But in my opinion, it is so beyond to be like, hey, I wrecked this home and like your life, but I'm gonna have a party here and you know, you just have to deal with it. I thought it was stupid more than anything. It's his home.
he's allowed to have parties for his birthday. You know, he's been doing it for a few years at that house. I feel like any person with an ounce of common sense would be like, mm, you know what? Maybe like in this moment, I'll show that person and anyone else who sees what's going on that I am growing and I am learning and I do have respect. Girl, he was f***ing your friend in the house. All right, having a little birthday party ain't shit. Like, come on. Yeah. I don't like dealing with the aftermath of parties. When you have people over, it should be I don't know, maybe assumed that those people will clean up after themselves. And that was just like never the case. It's always like the next day, it's a disaster. She would use the excuse that like, oh, like who's gonna clean up the mess? And so whenever there was an issue like that, I always took care of it. I'm like, well, if I have people over, I'm gonna have somebody come and clean in the morning. So you don't have to worry about anything. It'll actually be cleaner tomorrow morning than it is currently right now. His response would be like, well, look, by the end of the day, see, it's all fine again. And it's like, yeah, because you had Anne cleaning up after you, but it's still a f***ing disaster. And it's just like the inability to have a party without trashing the house, essentially. I'm not paying a mortgage for other people's recreation. Why is he acting like he didn't have, like, options? Like, this was like, you, like, I... Like, I, this is the only thing He does do. own a bar. This <laughs> Overall, it worked out because it was like, okay, the party will be tame and then it'll be moved somewhere else by the time you're home. And it was. If I'm not a f***ing raging bitch, I will be walked over. Two years ago, I wanted to have people over and she vetoed it for, like, I had to really, like, fight for it. So, yeah, I mean, of course I expected her to not want that. Plus, you know... I don't know. It causes continuous friction in your relationship, no? What? You being a night owl and her kind of being more of a, well, yeah. I, I don't mean a homebody as a derogatory term, but she just likes to She's be- She's very much to herself. Yeah. I think it could be a symptom of what was wrong. You know, looking back, she would be very reactive. It could be me just having a good day. That would piss her off. And it made me want to go be around Schwartz or be around Kyle, where I felt more like positive energy. But that only further drew us apart. You know what I mean? Like eventually I kind of gave up on trying and it became this thing of like, I'm like, well, do you want to do this, 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 or this? And it's like, no, quality time is only this. Literally only very specifically taking a walk at 7.15 with Maya, you know, around the block. I'm like, no, it's, it's sharing a moment, sharing an experience. I would want to do mushrooms with her. And she just didn't want to do them with me. It was never about the drinking or the mushrooms. It's that you wanted to go and, and create new memories together. Yeah, like, that hurt my feelings. You know, like. You laugh. No, I, it just sounds silly on the surface, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It is, a, it is a special, sacred bond. And when we, dude, you know, when Ariana and I first met, like she was down like to be adventurous. She was down to like whatever, but eventually it became like annoying to her. My adventurous spirit became like annoying Yeah. and like, irritating so I just kind of made the mistake of of slowly like gravitating away from that energy when you went to what peach mm -hmm. uh, with Lala she brings up the living situation again I own the house I mean wouldn't it just be easier to move out yeah sure when the house is sold the housing thing is complicated you know it, it ain't that and if the rules were it ain't switched that complicated. Lala, it ain't that complicated. In a situation where she got granted, out the next day granted. with the baby. Lala didn't own that house, like at all. So she was able to pack she up could her just... stuff and say goodbye. Yeah. I did not own the home with with my person. Right, exactly. So that changes things. It doesn't change anything. Actually. Yes, it does because yeah, she totally owns out. it with Tom. So she's trying to. They were trying to figure that out. You, in the beginning. you move out of the house. You don't. You don't forfeit the home because you decided to move out. She doesn't lose the home because she decided to move out. It's not how it works. I think she was standing her ground, like she had Maya there. And I don't have like my mom and my brother don't live here as like people who are gonna, you know, help me out day to day. She also had a baby that was involved in the situation, so I understand why she would want to get Ocean out of there. I'm good, I can take care of myself. I always have, I always will. Tom should have bloody left. Tom, Sandoval is not gonna leave, okay? Then why should Ariana? She doesn't have to, but don't say you're not leaving because you can't afford it. Oh, is that what she That's said? That's what she said, Okay. Yes. Well, the money was tied up into the house and the deals that she was making Bullsh during Scandival. No. Bullsh 
Oh, that money's oh. not All right, well, look, I don't know the financial details, okay? This is a very large investment that I've made that I saved essentially my entire adult life for. I don't know if anyone's heard about, like, Los Angeles rent lately, but um, if I'm going to be with a dog who's 50 pounds and a cat in an apartment, I'm going to be looking at paying, I know you pay a lot, mm -hmm. I'm going to be looking at paying at least that because you also started living there a while back, so rent's higher now. You're paying a mortgage, and then for a long time, we were also paying the rent on something about her. So I don't know what kind of money Lala also thinks I have, but it's not really an option. Now, at the end of the day, it's like, I want to see my friend Ariana be in a good headspace, and she is, but a good headspace also means that you get to go home, and that's like your safest space to regroup and like, re like revive yourself from like everything that she's been doing, right? And you come home to a place that has his energy and like his stuff or his dirty dishes. And it's like, I just wanted to know why. And every time I asked that question, it was like, how dare you? It was a really weird season. This is like a, a generalization, but I think it shows some maturity on both of their behalfs to be able to do that. When it's just you two in there, you guys are super, respectful and mindful of each other's spaces. Yeah. You got the white noise machine, which I've had to incorporate in my apartment because my dogs have been barking too much at the door. What's up with that white noise machine? It's literally just the loudest, like... <laughs> it's so weird because it's like, he thinks I'm I'm like, out, like what was I, like, outside? The, yeah. Like spying on, like you give a what he is yeah. saying to anyone. Like, it's so bizarre. <laughs>